I think we do it in a, in a multitude of ways. Uh, one is just how you interact uh, via media um, and, and how you get them interested in your existing products, right? Um, and so that can happen in many ways. I think we're stuck in the kind of old world of commercials and creating those. We've just created a new Scotty the Scotsman commercial that you know, you'll see out there in, in your linear cable. But there's different ways to interact with them, whether it be through social media, through other digital uh, uh, and search uh, media. So we're always exploring those new ways. And I would say we're always probably challenging ourselves, saying we're underinvested in those new, new ways to, to reach them. They are engaged in the category, definitely. Um, and we see that every day. Um, and, but how they interact will, is obviously different than like a boomer generation or like myself, a, a Gen Xer. On the D2C front, we've invested in that quite a bit over the past, I'd say, five years. Um, and in, you know, not just with like Amazon partnering with them, but with all, also our other key partners. And I think where that's morphed is uh, not, so, not so much just providing that uh, product to those, to those companies that are online and through a direct to consumer, but also working with our retail partners to see how do we improve foot traffic in stores or how do they interact with, with that, that similar generation so that our marketing strategies are more tied together. And so I'd say that's where a lot of that's been changing. Uh, I think initially five years ago or however many years ago was we just need to get in the space, right? And now it's, okay, well, how do we morph that strategy? How do we interact with them better? And then how do we help our customers uh, who are the big retailers out there um, also reach that generation? Because, you know, they'll run our products on their ads um, and it's a relationship that uh, we need to work closely with them on so that we can both reach those, those, okay. uh, those generations. During the pandemic, we, we learned that Lawn and Garden was essential to, to, the, uh, to the consumer and to everyone out there. You know, as people hunkered down or sheltered and, and kind of stayed in their homes, they, they turned to gardening, they turned to their lawns and taking care of it. And that just showed that, you know, we meant a lot to them. Now it created a lot of friction and, and disruption in how we, uh, we met their demand, because like I said, 15 years of sales volume in two years, it's pretty incredible. So we had to build our infrastructure to support that. Uh, and unfortunately, the volume, people going back to work, traveling more and stuff, we're starting to see the boomerang effect of that, obviously, the past two years. Um, and it's been super disruptive to our business. So we've had to, you know, I would say in some areas violently, other areas not so violently, kind of deconstruct some of the infrastructure we've, we've had to do. Um, I'd say during COVID, you know, with that amount of extreme volatility, a lot of our planning went out the window, right? Because you didn't really have, you were like, well, are they all, all going to stay? You know, is that volume really going to be there? And I think since then, we've gotten back to more of our, I'll call back to basics of discipline uh, on a monthly, quarterly basis, um, both at the, at the lower levels and then also with our leadership of really just setting out a goal, reasonable goals. Now we can look at more, uh, yeah, we're a consumer products company and we may only grow two to three percent a year now instead of, 15 20 percent in one year which is just super extreme and so that just has helped us with our capital planning and then working with our bank partners i mean imagine giving a bank partner a budget um, and then next thing you know you're overperforming it by 20 percent and then the next year you're underperforming it by 20 percent that's pretty extreme and they want some stability and hopefully we can we can bring that going forward I just say Scott's Miracle Grow is an incredible company. Uh, it's been, I think, over 150 years in existence. Um, to me, it's one of the American kind of essential companies that's out there, both for your yard and th uh, through the Scott's products, whether it's grass seed fertilizer and then uh, Miracle Grow with plant food and stuff. So it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, it's based in uh, Marysville, Ohio, and you know couldn't be more American than that. <music>